It is my political responsibility as a Minister of State in charge of economic monitoring in the presence of oversee and ensure the effective implementation of both central and local government programs, policies, and projects are effectively implemented to provide the anticipated socioeconomic transformation that our party, NRM, has promised to all people of Uganda. In order to fulfill this mandate, it's important to appreciate that the majority of Ugandan or majority of government programs and the projects, if not all, that are responsible for socioeconomic transformation that my party advocates for are implemented at the grassroots level in the district and indeed at the parish level. This is the reason we have adopted the parish development model as a vehicle of inclusive development at the parish. Colleagues and dear participants who are here and those who are listening to me, it is for this reason that I have decided to be more of a field officer and minister and I want to assure you, I started my countrywide monitoring of government programs and projects from Iwanda, Lubirizi, Kasese, and specifically I want to address myself to Kazinga Channel Bridge in Kasese. I also inspected the construction of the staff house at the Mulago National Referrals Hospital. I have now decided to pitch camp in the Bunyoro sub-region from 14th to 30th of this month. In Bunyoro, I'll start with the inspection of all oil roads in the Bunyoro sub-region. Then after, I will move to all the districts in the Bunyoro sub-region. I intend to extend my monitoring visits to all parts of the country as long as I remain in the docket of economic monitoring. Not only to oversee the implementation of the existing central and local government project, but also to popularize and check out the readiness of our community to embrace the parish development model. Monitoring of the parish development model is in line with my mandate given by cabinet to my ministry to be responsible for monitoring and evaluation of this project. It's also important to note, I will jointly conduct this oversight monitoring of the implementation exercise with my colleagues, the Honorable Minister, specifically in Bunyoro, I'll be with my colleague, the Minister of State for Bunyoro Affairs, the members of parliament from Bunyoro sub-region, the district leaders and other leaders familiar with the programs, stock the pro projects in question. As you are aware, every quarter government releases funds for the implementation of programs and projects in line with the work plans submitted by the different MDAs and local governments. Unfortunately, some of the funds released under have been misused and misappropriated, thus depriving the intended beneficiaries of service that would transform their lives. This is a great disservice to our communities that entrusted our party, the NRM, with the leadership of this country. This, I want to say, must stop. And it can only be stopped by us leaders who are entrusted with this mandate. I also want to call upon the public to be vigilant and report all non-performing projects, both to me, to my ministry, and the technical people who are working with me as far as this is concerned. We had projected to transform our country into a middle income level status by 2020, but this didn't happen because of mainly poor or slow implementation of development intervention that would have enabled to achieve this target. The most unfortunate bit is that if we delay or poorly implement development projects, we incur penalties on the money borrowed for implementation of this project. And in the long run, the money we would be using to increase our productivity level by implementing more projects end up by 
end up in servicing loans and penalties suffered due to poor implementation. We can't continue running a country like this. Some people who have failed, who have fallen short on their responsibilities must be brought to book. And the NRM government has to be exonerated from this irresponsibility. So I would like to sound a warning to all leaders charged with this responsibility of implementing government programs and projects to be in the central, be it in the central or at the local government country, to be fair to themselves and implement what they have been charged with for the good of themselves and the people they are interested to serve, of which we are coming for them. Therefore, during this monitoring exercise, my focus will be, will be on programs and projects in education, health, work stock engineering, water, natural resources, and community-based services, including, but not limited, including a mioga, which directly impacts on the common people's well-being. So I call upon the different ministers from various sectors to cooperate with me, especially when I seek clarification either directly from the ministry or from the field-based officers during this exercise to achieve effective service delivery the citizenry of this country. I have already written to the members of parliament from Bunyoro sub-region to join me in this exercise. In addition, all district leaders, especially the rendered district commissioners, the COWs, the DISOs, DPC, district executive, LOC 5 chairperson, heads of department, and the local government political leaders are all invited to attend my first brief, which I will have with the districts before I get to the field. And my program while in the district, I intend to have meetings from 8 to 9, and from 9 to 5 o'clock, I will be in the field with them, inspecting, checking on all the projects in line with what I've just mentioned here above. It's well documented in the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, and the local government act under Article 203A of the Republic of Uganda, and Section 71 of the local government act, Cap 243, as are many respectively, that the RDCs are the chief monitors of all central and local government programs or projects. However, these RDCs face a challenge while executing their mandate that among others include limited own access to programs or project information that allows them to effectively fast track the implementation of these projects or programs. My office is exploring ways of installing a dashboard that will mirror all government projects, programs, and the amount released utilized for the implementing them as well as those that were unutilized. Once these efforts become a reality, we shall be availing the RDCs with this information ourselves so that they monitor what they already know, not what they are told by these implementers. I therefore call upon all accounting officers in the ministries, departments, and agencies, and local government to constantly avail the necessary information, stock documents, the resident commissioners, to allow them to execute their mandate. As such crucial documents include, and I want to emphasize on this, the documents which I want to call upon all accounting officers of all MDAs to be given to these resident commissioners to make them achieve or fulfill their mandates include the budget estimates for the financial year, the district development plans, bills of quantities and specifications for projects being implemented, performance agreements between the PSST and the COWS. These agreements, these performance agreements are contracts signed between the chief administrative officers and the PSST where COWS commit to meet targets in the district work plans for running financial years. The contract therefore gives a breakdown of what cow must fulfill for every financial year. These contracts, I suppose, are tagged to be to the released budget. So there shouldn't be any excuse by other DCs to fail to do their work once they obtain these contracts. I must state days of waiting to be told 
that there is a problem here or there are gone. We shall be proactive in how we conduct our monitoring exercise to ensure that government programs, stroke projects are inspected as they are being implemented. And a case in the point would like to pilot this approach with the implementation of the parish development model to avoid mistakes that failed previously, well thought interventions. Arresting and addressing implementation bottlenecks early enough will guarantee effective and efficient service delivery to the people of Uganda. Just like my office is doing on other follow-up actions in my districts I told you earlier on, Iwanda, Lubirizi, Kasese. In addition to Mulago Referral National Hospital, we shall be directly engaging with the responsible MDS and tasking them to clarify the identified implementation lapses. The civil servants found capable of NMS will be identified and appropriately dealt with according to the established reward and sanction policy introduced by the Minister of Public Service and subjected to other disciplinary actions put in place, which will be, they will be charged accordingly. In all that we are doing, we shall keep the office of the Right Honourable Prime Minister, who is the leader of government business in Parliament, and also Chief Implementation Coordinator informed about Above all, we shall be preparing executive briefs to H.E. the President, or Her Excellency the Vice President, on all our findings in the field. Effective implementation of government programs or projects is a collective responsibility, and we must all be seen to play our part if we are to stop poor, slow implementation that costs the country and the citizenry their prosperity. The presidency will be hosting for the first time, this forum called the Public Policy Management Executive Forum, in short called the APEX, in November 2021. The forum will be chaired by His Excellency the President or Her Excellency the Vice President. In his absence, it will mainly feature a deep discussion on the implementation of the 23 presidential directives that were issued by H.E. the President in 2016 and reissued in the commencement of the new cabinet when we were sworn in. We shall look at what was done, how it was done, why we didn't do, why we didn't achieve what the president tasked the government then to achieve. Lessons learned and policy recommendations aimed at first tracking the implementation of, this di of those directives. My office is examining these directives in details and interacting with all MDS by directive and whoever was responsible will come with performance trends covering the period of the last five years to see where the gaps are and how they can be closed. The APEX platform will emphasize results and actions. We shall not entertain lamentations. An informed reports due to lack of data for any spelled out intervention. Whoever is blamed for not providing data will be brought before H.E. the President, to explain himself or herself why the data cannot be availed to the government in time. The forum will also be a stage for name and shame of who has done their work well and those that have not. The platform provides for contribution from the state and non-state actors to contribute to the effective public policy management and improved service delivery based on evidence. This platform further emphasizes on enhances citizenry, mass line engagement and communication of national development targets, stroke goals, the utilization of results and enlisting feedback from the mass line, hence making government accountable to the people.